Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where and when you're watching this show from. My name is Denise Belil, and I'm a serenity expert and positive intelligence specialist. I'm really happy to be here today, and I'll be talking to you with Sue Wilty, and we'll be talking about wellness, and uh, actually, I'm lying, I'm lying, is recharge your addiction to success, so wellness into your business, and and then this show, it's called It's All Good, Look is here for a chat, because I come here every Monday, and I bring you extraordinary guests so that you can learn and discover different facets of your life, your business, and all area. And why is it called It's All Good? Well, the main reason is, look at this, it's my favorite cup. It's called It's All Good. I was sitting down a Saturday morning thinking about how am I going to be calling this show? And then I was sipping on my tea and I was like, oh, why don't I call it It's All Good? Because in life, you never know what's going to happen to you. And when things happen, usually we can't control. We, if it happens five minutes ago, it's all good. You can't change it. Why get upset and carrying angers with you for the things of the past? And if it's something that's coming up in the future, you can't predict the future either. And if you can't, please tell me the lotto number for the next draw, because we can't do that. So why worrying and having anxiety about the future when you can't control it? We can do our best today, right here, right now, to have the best life that we can. And that's how I live my life. I invite you to live yours. So let me uh, introduce you to my guest. As I said, her name is Sue Wilhide. And she, I have my cat meowing on the side. He said, thank you for the, the snack. She's the Be the Vibration speaker. And our topic today is Recharge Your Addiction to Success. Sue share, shares our easy three-step method for shifting your brain to, the, to your side and becoming addicted to success without any negative, negative side effect. So who is Sue? So after researching the top of her IT, after reaching, sorry, I'm misreading today. After reaching the top of her IT career in six years, Sue injured a health issue in a form of an ulcer. She realized that these type of illness are common in the corporate world, and especially in successful women, because of their high pressure career and responsibilities. In addition, successful women feel stalled and frustrated with their career because of emotional residue that hold them back. Sue has made our life mission to make sure successful people get off their yee butt. She's an international number one bestseller author, award-winning host show, law of attraction coach, and certified biofield tuning practitioner. So without any further ado, let me welcome Sue. Woohoo! Woo Thank you for being here. I'm so glad Thank you're here. You, Denise. Thank you for having me on your show. I love the title. I love the theme. It so is good. absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. And what you were talking about, um, it as far as, you know, we can't control the future, we only have the past. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. So that's fabulous. We're right aligned with what we're talking about. So yeah. um, so so how did you get started into wanting to help people more on their mindset and the way they see their business? Yeah. So as you said in my introduction. I originally come from an IT background mm -hmm. and I was a really hot programmer, database designer, systems analyst and designer. I was really, really good. And the reason I was really, really good is because I wasn't all about the programs. I mean, the software was cool. It was fun to play in computing, you know, sandboxes, but I was all about the people. And I was more interested in using the computer as a tool mm -hmm. to allow people to get through whatever it was in their job early, or at least earlier, so that they could go off and have a life. And they could yeah. stop being miserable at work, right? Because a lot of what happens 
at work is a lot of, you know, you've got to grind, you've got all this stuff to do. Especially when you go into IT, right? right? Like, I mean, like my computer doesn't respond to me, you know? <laughs> right. And that's so, stressful. It is stressful. And, and I got a reputation <laughs> for uh, somebody would call and go, help, my computer doesn't work. And I'd go over there and I'd say, okay, show me the problem. And it wouldn't happen. And so That's I, typical. Right. And so I wouldn't, I would never blame anybody for that. It was like, well, no, you know, my aura was such that I would just scare whatever bug it was away. And <laughs> I would Until it comes back. <laughs> and if it comes back, I'll take care of it. You know, it's, yeah, it's all good. Yeah. But, but I was all about having people be better at work. Yeah. No matter yeah. what. And when I ended up getting an ulcer, mm. because I was so passionate <laughs> about getting things done and getting people, you know, on the road to whatever it was that they wanted to do, I realized that that put unnecessary pressure on me. Yeah. And oh my goodness, if I was doing this, what were other people doing? Yeah. And so uh, it was through hypnotherapy that my ulcer got taken care of. So okay. I well, I guess to... through hypnotherapy, you got rid of the stress that helped you get rid of the ulcer, right? Well, it was a one session deal. So whatever it was, yeah, it, it got rid of the ulcer. Amazing. So I took a deep dive into the whole mind body connection. That was what yeah. was fascinating about hypnotherapy to me. Again, it was like, wow, how can I make it better for people and, yeah. and have them be, you know, in, in a better life? Mm -hmm. And I love the whole mind, body, spirit connection. You can't leave out spirit. Um, it just, for me, it doesn't work. Uh, it just slow. <laughs> uh, and when you start diving into it and you find out how much your mind influences your body and mm -hmm. how how absolutely inescapable your attitude is in terms of what you see in your life yeah you can't you can't not come to the conclusion that you create your life you absolutely create i like i'm life. i'm a seller of that for sure right right and so the only possible response, and I'm sure you're on board with this, Denise, is to have a positive attitude. There's no other way. There's no other way. If you want your life to work, you must have a positive attitude. Yeah, because the, the negative is the default. Like that's, it doesn't require any effort to be negative and look around us. Right. Like there's <laughs> there's a lot of people are not doing a lot of effort and, and that's what they do. That's what they say. That's what they project. You know, negativity. If you look at a scene and you say, OK, what do you see? They'll point out the negative stuff before the positive stuff. Right. Right. And it's because of how our brain is wired. Mm -hmm. It's really sad that our brain is wired. Um, uh, one of my coaches said our, our brains are wired like the the guy up in the crow's nest of a ship going there's rocks oh my god another pirate ship <laughs> oh no look there's a wave <laughs> they're constantly giving you we're not looking at oh the sea is calm you know the sea is good you know we're right. doing good right. right our brain is designed to find danger because yeah. that keeps us alive. well the fight or flight mode that's innate in us right right and so we are constantly our default is to look for the negative it's yeah. sad and it's true so you get to program yourself to shift that default as far over to the positive as you can get mm -hmm. that is that to me is is our life's work it's no matter what else we're doing yeah move the needle over so more positive is our default rather yeah. than more negative. Well, that's the, that's the old saying, you know, like the more you put your energy into something, the more you'll get of it. 
And like I've done a, um, I was listening, it was not a podcast, it was a, an audio book. And the lady was giving an example of where you put your focus on, that's what you see. And she was telling us as she does the audio book, okay, now wherever you are, what are you driving? What are you walking? What are you just sitting? Look around and see how many things that you see that are blues. So if you're outside, you'll think of the sky, you think of this and that, the blue car, the blue this and this and that. Then she stopped and she says, okay, how many red thing did you see? And so the idea is like, well, I didn't see any red thing. I saw a whole bunch of blue things because that's where I was focusing my energy into, right? And, and it's very simple, but it's the way it works, right? Like wherever we put our energy, that's where we'll, we'll see more of that. If you're buying a car, I give that example also, right? Like when I, when I first, I have a PT Cruiser convertible, which are, they stopped mm -hmm. making now, but I had one of the first one that came out. So there was not the whole lot, you know, that, that were out there, but, but I would see them all, right? I would see them all. Say, oh, another yeah. PT Cruiser, another PT Cruiser convertible, you know, like it's, you know, different than the four doors, you know, the, the convertible, they were like, Ooh, they're cool, you know, and they're large and spacious. And, but I would see them everywhere, but. You know, if I would pass by one, I would know that I met, that I crossed one. Yes. But ask me how many, you know, how many Volkswagen have I, was I seeing? I don't know. Right. Because that's not where my focus right. was. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. And so you want to try to focus on what benefits you, mm -hmm. what works for you. And yeah. And I will be the first person to tell you that it's hard work. It's an effort. And once you get good at it, like anything else, it gets easier and easier. There's just yeah. a curve. I don't want to be one of these pie in the sky positivity people who say, oh, yeah, I just think positive and it'll all work out. Everything's good. It, it takes work. It does take work. Yeah. And, and you get to put your attention on it and once you put your attention on it that's the hard part once you get through that you're good <laughs> then it's yeah. all good <laughs> yeah yeah it's all good and tell me a little bit about um recharge your addiction to success so so how do you work with people about that so tell me about you know how how can we reach our like get used to success and not sabotage ourselves right so when we we're little kids when we first learned how to walk, mm -hmm. did we care that we fell down? No. 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 You watch a baby learning to walk. Are they 100% focused on walking? Once they get the idea in the head that walking is for them, a baby will do anything. They get back up. <laughs> to get back up. Anything. And, and this is the, this is the uh, cry of parents everywhere. It was yeah. like, oh, I wanted them to learn how to walk, and now I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they're crawling and walking and, and touching they're everything. They're crawling and walking. They're pulling themselves up. They're grabbing your hand. They're grabbing your clothes. They're grabbing everything they can, and they fall down, and they go, okay, I fell down. I'm getting back up again. Yeah. Where did that go? Right. How did we learn to not do that? How do we not, how did we give that up? <laughs> right? We gave that up because people told us we couldn't. Hmm. When babies are learning how to walk, nobody is telling them they can't do that. Can't imagine, eh? The kids try to get up, say, no, sit, you know? Sit. No, don't, <laughs> don't do this. You can't, no, you're not allowed to walk. Uh, wow, that would be mind blowing. <laughs> uh, uh, and so we slowly learn that it's not okay to mm. want what we want. And it's not okay to do whatever it takes to get what we want. Mm -hmm. And then you see ex extraordinary people who went, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and didn't listen to those folks who were saying, no, you can't. And just went, yes, I can. Oh, yeah. I fell down. I'm getting back up again. Oh, I fell down. I'm getting back up again. It doesn't matter. I'm going. Yeah. And and so my, what my job is as a coach is to help people reignite that passion to reconnect with that 
dauntless, absolute focus on that's what I want. That's what I'm going for. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, a few things that I do. And one of them, we were talking earlier about the, the negative mindset. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you were talking in the introduction about um, how stuff happens in life. <laughs> it happens. It happens, right? And what ends up happening is that because we are so attuned to the negative, that when negative things happen, when things that happen that are getting in our way, when things happen that seem to be setbacks, when things happen that seem to be just pouring down on us and just being a, a whole waterfall of stuff that's getting in our yeah. way. It's really easy to curl up and go, oh my God, I can't bear this. This is- I'm gonna yeah. die. You know? <laughs> right? It, it, and it happened, there, there's a bunch of stuff that's happening with people. Yeah. You know, there's food shortages, there's fuel shortages, there's all kinds of things that are going on. There's, I won't go into all of them. The trick to know, first off, this is this is lovely. I got this first from, um, oh goodness, I'm forgetting her name. Uh, uh, my stroke of insight, uh, June Taylor Bolt. I think okay. is her name. I think I got her first name wrong, but Taylor Bolt. Bolt. Um, she put out a tweet a, a number of years ago to say, "By the way, folks, did you know?" that an emotion only lasts 90 seconds in your brain. Anything after that is on you. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. This is this is strict biochemistry. So yeah. you get a stimulus, your brain processes whatever emotional response it is, and your brain will naturally give it up after 90 seconds. Yeah, that's the idea of the fight or flight, right? Like, I mean, if you get chased by a lion back in the days, right? right? And right. then you get safe in your cave and then you're, you're, you're relaxed, like uh, within a couple of minutes, you you bring back to, to normal homeostasis, right? right? Like you're just right. like, you know, right. yeah. Because if you, you didn't worry all day long about that you race. Didn't with worry about it. You know, oh my God, that lion was chasing me. Oh my God, the lion was chasing me. I could me. have oh died. God, that is like <laughs> I could have died. Oh. No, we don't. You don't. The brain naturally would like to let go of that. Yeah. Because it's not healthy for the brain to continue to have that stress response. It causes welcome a to the twentieth century. <laughs> right. It causes a cortisol response, and mm -hmm. it, that causes major health problems. Um, yeah. It actually eats the muscle in your heart. So if you want a reason to not have cortisol. Eating yeah. the muscle in your heart is a really good one. Um, yeah, I call that sustained stress. Sustained it's, stress, exactly. It's stress, you always have something that's going to stimulate you, whether it's you remembering all the negative stuff that happened in the morning, the afternoon, the evening, whatever, or whether you you have other stress that are piling up on top of one another. For me, I call that sustained stress. Is you're in a state yes. that you never go back to the normal, the the quiet. Exactly. Brain and wave. from that point, it turns out to be absolutely impossible to shift from a level of stimulation and excitation in the brain to calm. You mm. can't go from 100% excitable to 100% calm. Mm -hmm. Your brain doesn't do that. So there's a step in between. And I love teaching this because this is, this is so powerful. And it really helps not only to shift out of a, a less than optimal uh, emotional state, we'll call it. I hate using the words positive and negative um, because they're just emotions, you know, yeah. anger, fear, you know, hatred, they're, they're just emotions. They, they just what they are. And, and they're fine. They just need to go away after the 90 seconds, right? You can, 
let the 90 seconds go by. And then sometimes your brain, because it wants to flag you that there was danger, it's going to try to replay it. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you get into it again. And I should have said that. Oh, that. Why did she say that to me? Why, why did I say that? I should have said well, something else. I could have done that. Why? Why did I get out of the way? Why? You know, you always have like that replaying that scene over and over and see different scenario. Right. But it's useless. You can't it's change useless. the past. You know. <laughs> no. So here's here's what I teach people. All right. You go. Give us the from, nugget. Yes. Yes. You go, there, there's two things that you need to prepare ahead of time. The first one is something that is absolutely 100% neutral. No emotional response to it whatsoever. And the thing that I tend to suggest is a door hinge. Because pretty much nobody has an emotional reaction to a door hinge. If you're mm -hmm. a carpenter, maybe. Um, if, you, yeah, if you've had yeah. problems with door hinges, then don't pick door hinges. But I like to pick door hinges because 90% of the people that I work with have never had a problem with a door hinge. Yeah, in their yeah life. you can't pick a uh, the foot of the bed because lots of people right. have problems with the foot of the bed. Right, right. You want right. to pick something <laughs> neutral. absolutely neutral. Neutral, all right. Neutral. Yeah. And so when you find yourself in that little squirrel cage, yeah, of, yeah. Da, you consciously go, I'm thinking of a door hinge. And for 90 seconds, you think of a door hinge. You think about what it looks like, how long it is, what material is it made out of? Yeah, how does yeah. it taste? How does it smell? What kind of a door does it open in? Does it open out? Is it really, really one of these thick, massive door hinges or is Bring it a thing? Yeah. Is it brass? Is it silver? What is it? You do that for 90 seconds and you think about the door hinge. So it, that's the neutral. That's yeah. the neutral. And you get your brain to unhook. And then, this is the second thing you need to prepare. Something that makes you smile, gives you pleasure. Go to your happy place. Happy. For me, I have three things, a rose, a sunset, or a sunrise, and a baby's laugh. Right? I just made you smile just saying those things. Yeah. You think about those things for 90 seconds. Whatever you're positive, the thing is, is that they need to make you smile. Mm -hmm. They need to make you actually lift your lips, open your mouth, and have the, aw, yeah, to have that heart lift. Mm. Because if all it does is go, oh, yeah, that's kind of nice, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is train your brain. And this is another whole neurology thing that I'm going to get into because I just love this stuff. You want to train your brain to disengage and literally separate all of those cascading thoughts and break that up. That's what thing does. And yeah. instead, give it this positive aspect of pleasure to focus on yeah because and if you take not, three minutes yeah if you take three minutes just to start with to not think about your problem or what angers you already just that will and then yeah. focusing on the on the neutral and in the positive it kind of does you know brings you right down to being positive or right up you know yeah, bring you right up to being positive yeah. whichever way you would look at it no, there's there's some neurobiology behind this. Can I talk about this? Because absolutely, really cool. bring the science. Yeah, yeah because it, and for those of you who are going, oh my god, she's going to bring neurology into this. Uh, no, 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 don't be afraid. This is really cool. <laughs> I love I love explaining difficult concepts. This is one of my superpowers. Is Wonderful. explaining complicated things in ways that people understand, and I love doing it. So, imagine that. Every thought in your brain is like a braided rope. 
Yeah. And every thought has these associated thoughts that are connected in with it. And this is actually what causes that cascade because your brain wants to be efficient. <laughs> your brain uses most of the energy in your body. And so it wants to be super, super efficient. So if you get a negative thought, if you get a thought that is not in your best interests, it's one of those um, uh, cascading things yeah. going on. Your brain says, oh, I know everything that's associated with that. And it brings it in and it ties it together yeah. in a little bundle that's called an engram. Every time you fire up a piece of that, the whole engram goes with it. When you do this process of, oh, I just noticed I've got this engram going off. I'm going to think of a door hinge. Now I'm going to think of something pleasant. I'm going to think of something that makes me smile. You just broke up the engram. It separates it out because now it's not efficient. Now these things don't belong together. They've, yeah. they've now got a different association. And the association is going to be, oh, here's this car accident. I'm now going to think about a door hinge and I'm now going to think about something that makes me smile. So this accident is now going to make me smile. Mm. And you've just erased or neutralized the whole cortisol cascade of stress around yeah. that response. Yeah. That's wonderful. I like that. Yeah. It's really cool. But what I, what I, the way I describe it, because it, I understand everything you're saying, is I say, well, create a buffer, right? And that yeah. buffer is that three minutes, right? And that gives you time to, to say, well, do I really want to react this way? Do I want to keep being upset? Sometimes sometime we do, right? Sometimes. For whatever reason, some, sometimes we do want to stay upset. But when you become conscious of your thought pattern and you say, oh, I'm in a fight or flight mode right now, I don't really want to be there. So let's let's be neutral, the door hinge, and let's be neutral with the, you know, bring the positive and the smile on my face. And now you just like that buffer, create a space that says, yeah, it's not worth it. Let's go here, you know? Right. And there's one more really important benefit to, to doing this unhook. Yeah. When you are in fight or flight, Denise, how creative are you? Oh, not very much. I would say you don't see like anything. You just go. You know, right? you, just... You, you get tunnel vision. Oh yeah, because that's what your brain Survival is trying to do, right? It's like find me one solution. Boom, let's go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it tends to be the the let's you know run away or hit somebody. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're, they're not. You know, that that's not particular. not very creative. <laughs> it's not very creative. Not useful. <laughs> When you go from the, the cascading emotions to neutral to positive, how creative do you think you get? A lot more because then you open your mind to other possibilities and to other right? solutions. The tunnel vision opens. Yeah. And now you can do what's called design school thinking, which is uh, there's a school at the University of Stanford uh, that uh, it's called design school. And their bottom line is every process, <laughs> every program, every problem that they are assigned to solve, they must come up with three solutions, three working yeah. solutions. So That's it's great. all about being creative, finding three yeah. solutions and allowing that expansion to happen. Yeah. Yeah, and once you start to have, once you start to have a mindset that for every problem there's a multitude of solution, then you don't look at your problem the same way. Right. What else could be done? What? El how else can I resolve this? How else can I take care of this? You know, what's this other type of solution I can use to do that? Because when you're tunnel vision, when you're on that, you know tight knit, you know, neurological connection, 
you're like, you're just like, okay, I got to run. I got to do this, you know? And I, I've been around people like that. And you try to slow them down and say, no, I got to do that right now, you know? And it's like, take a step back, you know, like breathe. No, no, that's, that's the only way. Okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. We've, we've had a lot of um, experience with this is the only way being not the best solution. <laughs> yes. Yes. So tell me about what type of people do you work with and um, like who can recognize themselves when they listen to this video? Yeah. So I'm hoping that uh, women who are frustrated with their careers, frustrated with what they've got going they're they've literally gotten themselves into a, a binding mindset of mm -hmm. the squirrel cage where they go, well, I need to do this, but I can't do it because of this. And I can't do it because of that. And then I've got to do that, but I can't do that. And I can't do that. And I can't do that. Come see me because I could get you off <laughs> what I call your yeah, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the yeah, but is all of the excuses that, well, I want to do this, but I, yeah, but I can't do that. There's mm -hmm. a solution. Yeah, but I can't do that. Yeah, get off yeah. your yeah. <laughs> That's great. Because That's there's, great. there's, there's ways around everything. Absolutely. You know, sometimes we feel like I have no choice. Yes, there's other solution. Sometimes we, because some, like every, every Thing that we do like I learned that when I learned uh, emotional intelligence years ago 25 years ago mm -hmm. everything that we do in our life is for pleasure yes and the reason why is like even if we don't like our work and we go to work the pleasure of having the income to be able to pay for the roof on our over our head now that is bigger than the displeasure of going to work so everything that we do, even if, you know, we're in a, a people that are in a relationship, abusive relationship, right? The right. pleasure or the discomfort of finding yourself all by yourself and alone and all that is bigger than like the fear of being all by yourself is bigger than the pleasure of, you know, like being in a non, Painful. non, <laughs> and that in a painful relationship, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so you rather stay there than be all by yourself. So, for the pleasure of being in a couple, you would stay there. So, everything. If we, if if you look at yourself in your life and and what you do, and when you think that, no, that's not for pleasure that I do that. Like analyze it, break it down, break it down. What happened? So, the way around that I found is now okay. So, let's say you want to have more let's call it real pleasure <laughs> in your life. So reduce the pain. So if you don't like your job, well, change your job, you know, like move, do something else. If you don't like your neighborhood, find ways to, to move. Or, you know, if you're not happy in a relationship, find ways to move out and get a roommate or, you know, like there's always other ways around, but there's lots of solutions. There are, there are. And sometimes, and this is again, one of my skill sets, sometimes it's just about removing the blinders mm -hmm. that you've either inherited or that you've developed over a lifetime. Yeah. That you literally cannot see the solution. It's like yeah. having cataracts. And part of what I do That's in funny. my coaching programs is help you remove those blinders yeah. and get them out of the way so that you can see your way clearly mm -hmm. into doing something that gives you way more pleasure. Let's, let's yeah. have, yeah. oh yeah, I'm enduring this. And that's somewhat better than, you know, having all my fingernails pulled out at the roots. Um, <laughs> I don't want that. Sorry. Right. Um, <laughs> I'd rather be, hey, I am happy. I am joyful. I love where I'm living. I love what I do. I really love the people that I work with. Wouldn't you rather have that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so how do people can reach you? Through my website. Okay. And my website is sweetsoundofsuccess.com. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. We'll put that in the show note or in the comment of the, the videos. 
Yes. Wonderful. And also, Denise, I'm hoping that you can put in the show notes. Uh, I have a link um, that gives you the the step by step process that I described earlier about oh, shifting yourself from the mm, not so great emotional cascade to. So you gave me a couple link. Is it the no fear one? Um, I think so. Okay. You gave yeah. me one, the sweet sound of success forward yeah. slash no fear. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'm definitely going to share that with the audience. And so any last, last note before we end this uh, conversation? Um, yes, it's one of my favorite things to say. And thank you, Denise, for giving me the opportunity to add this little postscript. No one will value you as much as you do. I'll say this again. No one will value you as much as you do. Mm -hmm. So put as high a value on yourself as you possibly can and have people value you at that level. Don't accept other people's devaluation of your brilliance. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Like I, I it's amazing because I, I that I saw my friend had a um, a note on her mirror in the bathroom, and I searched what that quote was from. It's from Ra Paul. You know that the uh, transvest transvestite, you know, man, beautiful man, and 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 he says, "Whatever people think of me is." None yeah, of my business. business. Yes. <laughs> yes. What people think of me is none of my none business. None of my business. I because love that. I'm right here. And if they think I'm there, that's their problem. Right. I know my own value. So I love okay. what you shared. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you, Denise. Thank you for having me on the show. My pleasure. So I'll put you in the back room for the, a little bit. Stay there. I'll be right back. So that was amazing conversation with Sue to talk about empowering yourself and believing in yourself and changing your mindset so that whenever you are stuck in a negative emotion, practice those steps that she shared. And I'll share the link in the, uh, the show note and the comment of these videos. So again, it's another amazing episode of It's All Good. Look who's here for a chat. I'll be back next week at 12 noon Pacific, and I hope that you'll come and check me out. Also, if you're watching this video on YouTube, please like and subscribe and click the little bell so that you're notified whenever the video and next video come up. Until next time, be kind to one another and have a fabulous week. Goodbye. <laughs>